Hey everybody, this is Beth Bond with Southeast Green and it's time for another episode of Full of Useless Information. Today we are going to be talking about, welcome Duchess, um, we're going to be talking about non-GMOs, organic, local versus non-local, and what millennials have to do with all these topics. I am going to try, let's see if I can do, I don't know if I can do this. Um, ooh, let's see, okay. All right, so these are the two logos. Oh, great. Um, I am so excited to have you on board, so you can help me then if, if I miss. So what we're looking at right now are um, two logos. Welcome to everybody who's joining us. If um, you like what you're going to be hearing today, please um, consider sharing this with friends. And, you know, always love the hearts. It's encouraging, but not mandatory. What we're more interested in is good dialogue. So thanks, Duchess Doodoo, for sharing. Um, as many of you know, there is a raging debate going on right now about whether uh, GMOs should be labeled or not. And um, these are the two. Yes. Oh, good. That's great to know that you're in Charlotte. Thanks so much. It's glad to have a, a fellow Southerner, not only a food activist, but a fellow Southerner on board. So the USDA, USDA Organic uh, logo on the left is the one that is issued by the USDA. The non-GMO non project verified is issued by a, uh, a non, it's, it's also a, a non-governmental organization. They are non-profit. So to use the USD organic, you have to go through a very thorough, um, hey, Todd, welcome to the show. Um, yes, exactly, uh, Duchess, and that's one of the challenges is that people do not realize that if it is USDA certified organic, it is also non-GMO. But um, for th those of you who are going to be watching the replay, um, remember that uh, GMO and USD organic are not mutually exclusive. And what you're seeing a lot of people doing now is using both of the logos. And so I wanted to explain what's going on so you can understand the difference. So what started was USDA Organic. In the world of, of irony, um, uh, about 20, I mean, maybe even 30 years ago, the U.S. Um, high <laughs> move from Central Mass, um, I got some really good news. I, I, let me start over since there's so many people on because this is clearly a hot, hot topic. My name is Beth Bond. I am curator of sustainable news from uh, Atlanta, Georgia on a website called southeastgreen.com and we cover all things sustainability but we've been covering a lot of food policy and I was up at Expo uh, East in September and so we've been talking a lot about food, and so I really appreciate you joining the Periscope. If you find it useful, please consider sharing. And um, hi, Sunny, nice to meet you. And um, also the video will be on Southeast Green under the Full of Useless Information series where I've been talking about all kinds of things, sustainability. Okay, so yes, I agree, Duchess, we do need to, to connect. Um, for those of you who are big on Twitter, I am a huge tweeter. Um, I'm sort of known for my tweeting of sustainability, and you can follow me at the same handle that we have here on Periscope, Beth S. E. Green, at Beth S. E. Green. If you want to connect with me on Twitter, I'd love to, love to do that. So on the left is the USDA Organic Certified uh, label. To be USDA or Organic Certified, you have to go through a rigorous pro process with the USDA. So it is a government seal. It is very expensive for a lot of people, and, and organic has gotten really confused. It's almost gotten gotten too big in some ways. And there were I attended several panels at Expo East about USDA organic versus uh, non-GMO project verified, and what what it all means. So USDA organic means if you are a farmer, let's just start there. If you're a farmer, it means you've gone through a three-year, very costly process and very time-consuming process with the USDA to certify that you are organic, and it costs multiple of thousand dollars. Ironically, if you are not USD organic, you don't have to do anything with the government. Um, you don't have to say anything. If you want, you can spray as many pesticides as you want, as long as they're illegal, um, and you're fine. But to prove that you're organic, you have to pay the government to prove that you're organic, so people like me have the option of eating pesticide-free uh, food. Yeah, it's a, it's a little backwards. Why don't we make the people who spray the pesticides prove instead of us, instead of those who want to eat organic? So, so that's what a farmer has to do. Three-year process, multiple thousands of dollars to get USD organic. But then there's also USD organic for foods. And I'm going to see if I can do this out, absolutely turning the world upside down. Um, 
and show you this. So this is, I don't know if you can see that. Can y'all see that? That is, this is a, right, many local farmers cannot afford it. So this is a product that has USD, it's called Little Me Tea, they're local here in Atlanta. Um, they have USD organic and non-GMO. Well, they're not farmers, but they have you they have taken the time to USDA certify their product. And so what happens is is if you're creating a product, then what you have to do is use USDA certified organic ingredients and then go through another level of certification to get that USDA organic. Clearly, it's very complicated. So the good news is is if you're purchasing USDA organic, you know that it's been through a verification process, unlike everything else. Um, and when you're doing USD organic, you have to list all your ingredients um, and, and you have to make sure that, and it's not that people, other people don't have to list all their ingredients, but when you're using USDA organic, it is a more rigorous process. So if you're really concerned about what you're putting in your body, or more importantly, what you're putting in your children's bodies, seeing the USDA organic uh, symbol is a great way to verify um, that you're you're doing the right thing for your family, in my humble opinion. Okay, so, but here's something else, and I didn't know this about, you can have a non-USDA certified organic product and use USDA certified organic ingredients and put on the back of your label somewhere an asterisk denoting which is a USDA certified. So you can have a product that doesn't say USDA organic but still have organic ingredients. And what I've been saying over and over and over again is let's make sure you read the labels. Reading the labels is absolutely critical because most people, if you if you use the term organic on your food on your food product and it's not USDA organic, you're going to have to change your label. But you got to get caught first, essentially, by the USDA. So it's up to us as consumers to really read the labels and make sure um, we're purchasing what we think we're purchasing. But also, if you see organic being used, it's not fair to the other people who've gone through the process using organic. So, and thank you so much for the hearts. I really appreciate it. I love it that this this uh, topic is resonating um, you know it, it behooves us as citizens to I don't want to say police but to be good citizens and let people know that you know a their product is not organic certified and they can't use the term organic and B you know go on and send a note to the USDA and let them know the USDA is not going to shut anybody down they're just going to notify them that they need to get up to standard so when you're shopping the, the, the fastest way to know you're safe is USD organic the non-GMO Project Verified is another way and has actually become more popular. And this is what I learned at Expo East. I thought this was very interesting. Has become more popular than the USDA Organic. But one of the things that I thought was really, really interesting and one of the panelists mentioned, um, and by the way, I'll put a link. Um, I was up at Expo East tweeting. And um, so I've got tweets of all the panels I attended. So I'll put a link under the YouTube so people can jump to that really quick. So anyway, the non-GMO, it is, it is a nonprofit. And what you do is you submit your ingredients and they verify that they're not GMO. However, it was, and I keep on interrupting myself because this is very exciting and important news to know. Non-GMO project verifying does not mean chemical free. Let me say that again. Non-GMO Project Verified does not mean it is chemical free. Organic is actually a higher standard than the non-GMO Project Verified. Non-GMO simply means they're not using uh, non-GMO products, I mean non-GMO seeds. It does not mean that they aren't using pesticides to grow those products. So let's say cabbage, which you know is not GMO, is being grown and um, you're getting um, fermented vegetables. So you go through the non-GMO project verified process and, you know, my carrots are GMO free, my cabbage is GMO free, my salt is GMO free, I get verified. That does not mean that my cabbage and my carrots was not grown without uh, pesticides. So if you're really trying to li live an organic um, lifestyle, it really is better to go with the USDA organic or to know who makes your product. And that's where the non-GMO um, can really come in. If, if someone's non project non-GMO verified, that means they're willing to go through the rigorous standards test. And so if you want to know if those vegetables were organic or not, and, nor and norm you're finding more and more often that um, there's some type of organic, you know, uh, claim on, I, I claim sounds ridiculous, but 
you know, they're making a statement that they're, that they're organic also without having the big certified USDA. But I would contact the company and say, hey, I see your non-GMO project verified, but you're not organic. Can you tell me why? Is your cabbage, you know, is your cabbage organic even if you didn't go through the USDA organic process? Um, a lot of the small and pop, mom and pop uh, companies who are in this movement are very, very committed. Um, and I have called several companies myself to find out. And if they're being transparent and honest, they'll be more than happy to tell you that, yeah, we're using organic, we're in the process of getting organic. You know, we're using organic the best we can. I've got a local grower. He can't, he's not USDA certified organic, but he's using organic, you know, trust but verify, trust but verify, trust but verify. So, um, and then there's the whole local movement. And guess what? There's not a logo for the local movement. So, I'm, I'm going to give you a hierarchy at the end of this on how you should look at purchasing. It turns out one of the conversations we had at Expo East was that millennials are not looking for the labels. They're actually looking to just to go local. And that's great because you can, as somebody already mentioned earlier, you can have a farmer who is using organic certification process, is you, sorry, is using organic growing practices without being certified. Or he may be midway through, he or she may be midway through the process of getting organic certified. Right, you always look at the, the ingredients and go local. The other thing about going local is it's, it's, it's much kinder in the planet. I mean, there's sort of this philosophical intellectual debate you can have is, if it's USDA organic, yay, but it comes from California, or you can you buy from a non-USDA organic farmer where you've been in his fields here in Atlanta, what's better? And... And in, in, my, in my humble opinion, actually going with the local farmer here because you're not, you know, you're not transporting your food 1,500 miles. And the produce that you get out of that farmer's, uh, gar sorry, that, that farmer's land is going to be much more sustainable because you're not putting all the gas in intensity in it. And you're supporting the local farm, farmer, which is actually better for the local economy. So millennials are like, well, we're going to go with local. But I just want to make sure that we can't all eat local farm food. It's just not possible. Um, we can all do the best we can do. Hey, but Bodacious Mama, I love that name. Thanks for joining. So, um, but in the hierarchy of how you're shopping, you want to sort of do it. Bye, Duchess. Uh, yeah, tweet me. Thanks. And... Um, so what you want to do is, is the best thing to do is to use a local organic certified farmer. If that option is not available, have a relationship with a farmer who's using organic growing practices but is not organic um, yet. And then the next, the next level down is to shop for these labels. And non-GMO, I, I shop a lot. I'm very loyal to non-GMO, but I do think it's important to know that non-GMO does not mean non-pesticide. So, uh, so on the first, you want to start shop farmer USDA, USDA local. Second, farmer you know well using organic growing practices but not certified. Third, USD organic because then you are guaranteed to be pesticide free and non-GMO all at the same time. And then fourth is non-GMO project. And don't let people sort of confuse this issue. And if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate you sharing it. Not because I want more more Twitter love or, or anything like that. I just feel like it's so important. And this is a conversation that's becoming uh, more and more uh, confusing. And it's and, and people are sort of missing the point. If you if you have a choice, if you have a choice between non-GMO project verified and nothing, then always look for the non-GMO project verified. And once again, a lot of the non-GMO Project Verified, they're using products that um, um, would hopefully be grown in, 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 a, in a, a, an organic way, and they just can't get that point. But that's where you know you have to do a little research and you have to do a little digging. And then the most important thing is to remember progress, not perfection. And so we're all on this journey together and, you know, it's not about feeling guilty. It's not, it's about making the best choi choice every day to uh, support not only your, your own health and promote your family health, but also promote the health of your community and to promote the health of, of, 
organic. So anyway, um, once again, my name is Beth Bond. I'm with Southeast Green. I'm the curator of Sustainable News. We cover 13 states in the Southeast. All the videos, um, all the, the videos I do on Periscope end up on Southeast Green. I have two locations because I, I do a bunch. I appreciate the people sharing today. I really uh, appreciate people who are uh, going back and sharing the videos once they get posted up to Southeast Green. Does anybody have any questions before I sign off? Great. Thanks so much for joining, and we'll see you on the next episode of Full of Useless Information.